race, race fans, fans are, are you ready? ready? It, it is, is time. time. Moxie, Moxie Media Promotions coming, coming to you live on Spreaker, Spreaker Radio from the Amco, Amco Total, Total Car, Car Care Studio. Studio. It, it is, is West, West Coast, Coast Wide, Wide Open coming at you right now. now. Like always in the studio, I'm the first and last one standing. It is Wednesday night. It is time for West Coast Wide Open. We are in the studio. Minus one member on the crew tonight. <coughs> Excuse me, Nina, not in the house. She is actually out bow hunting, believe it or not. If she's not shooting with her camera, she's shooting with bows and arrows and guns. And, you know, if she's not killing it, she's killing it. You know what I mean? Um, lots to talk about tonight. A lot to talk about, and it's going to be, uh, we're going to test, we're going to test our our listening base. There's going to be a lot of opinion on this show, a lot of fact, a lot of, um, a lot of stuff just to really hang out. I want to start like we always do. It, it's, it's like we always do. I want to know about my people's week, my crew, my team. I, I, I know you guys, some of you are interested in it, some of you aren't, but that's kind of how we start the show every week, and, you know, we, we, uh. We just let you guys know about our personal lives and, and what's going on. And I'm going to start with Sandy to my left. Sandy, how's your week been? <clears throat> he always starts with me. Um, it's been extremely busy. Um, it's a Hennessy and Coke kind of night. That's all I'm going to say. Whoa. Dave Stahl, Northwest Trucking Academy in the house. What's going on, sir? Well, I've been playing hooky from work. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> you know, listen, I can attest to that. That's a I, fact. I've been here more than I've been at work. I, I just say, well, I have an appointment. I won't be in today. And... Uh, the appointment is with the track out there doing some grading, uh, mm -hmm. just uh, trying to get it in shape. And I got a bum knee out of doing something out there. I don't know. But anyhow, just just keep going. Keep walking. Doctor look at it and said, just keep walking. You're fine. So nothing permanent. Made, so good to go. We made huge strides on the track yesterday. Dave and I got there and did some work to it, and this thing is just, we're just we're a little over a week away from getting action on the track, and by action I mean not us as as track owners and and personnel. I'm talking about bringing in some heavy hitters as a test session and getting them in there. So you guys stay tuned for that post on Moxie Me Promotions and on Marion Creek Speedway's Facebook page. Uh, Dave, uh, you've already you're, you're feeling good. Your knee. You went to the doctor today. There's no rash. You can walk. I'm <laughs> good. I'm good. <laughs> Uh, I'll, Gary? St I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, your week? Uh, so far, so good. It's It's been good. It's been busy. And uh, not much really to talk about on that front, but yeah. it's just the, the, the challenges you have with the industry I'm in. So. Right. Well, we got a lot to talk about tonight. Uh, and there's going to be some challenges getting through this conversation without um, without flaring some tempers, let's say. Well, to, to that. let's have... Corey, tell us how his week was. Well, I can talk about because my week. Because he always asks us, and I think sometimes he forgets to say how his week was and what he got accomplished this see, week. See, that goes yeah, back see, to the... he's so selfless, too, so... Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Part of that goes back to the uh, the stroke, you know, the short-term memory. I'm going to use that as an excuse in this case. It's probably not the truth, but I'm going to use it. It's the only excuse you have. Uh, it is. It is. Um, my week has been absolutely insane, hectic. Okay, um, with the hours that we're putting in on this racetrack out here, um, the work that when we were just working, Dave and I were out there working just until 20 minutes ago, we came in and scarfed down dinner. You know, we do tacos on Wednesday night here at, at the studio, and Gary came in and hammered down a couple tacos, and then we came down into the studio, and here we are. Um, lots of work, lo uh, lots of accomplishment this week. We did have a big barbecue. Every year we do a big thing out here at Marion Creek Speedway. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, we had about 60 people out. And later in the afternoon, when it cooled down a little bit, we got out there with the carts. Gary, Dave, you guys got to uh, experience some of that action out there at Marion Creek Speedway. And we had a good time. There was a lot of people, first-timers, that had never been in a race cart that are now hell-bent on getting race carts and getting into <laughs> the sport. 
So that run itself was a huge accomplishment. But just to get out there and actually feel the track, you know, under I – mean, there were three of us were racing. Um, and I know it was only three of us, but it was racing action. And I, I, I'm impressed with the track as a whole. I'm impressed with the surface and the way it changes and as it changes how it holds together. Uh, it's doing some different things than I thought it was going to do. But all in all, I think everybody's going to like this surface. It's, it's very unique, very tricky. What did you think about it? I Gary? totally agree. <laughs> just just uh, I did about ten laps the first time, and what three or four of the second, and then we let somebody else go. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I could hold that thing pretty much wide open going into the corner, and as long as you got confidence in the cart, you're gonna go. <laughs> you, you are, you are, and it's and and, and you got to learn that because these banks here, like I said, it's banked so high, it's tricky can uh, it actually helps a guy that that might not have the most talent in the world or you know not the best throttle control but it, i think gonna make it really really race phil Fowl was out here today uh phil Fowl is one of the most decorated kart racers not just in american history but in the history of the sport here's a guy that's done everything he's won national championships and and more than on one continent um and always won like eight of them here according to him and uh a couple in canada um, very accomplishment. I mean, everywhere you go, this guy is one of the guys you have to beat. He's in his last, coming into his last season at 60, I want to say, I think he's 67, 68, uh, decides that he's going to, he's going to retire from the driving aspect. And, uh, he is excited to get his dual. He's got a dual engine, KT dual engine cart. And he wants to get out here and slide around and, um, we'll see, uh, how that goes, but he's pretty excited about the place. We actually put a, a video up on Moxie or I'm sorry, on, on, uh, Marion Creek Speedway's Facebook page of him talking about what he sees, you know, just initial reaction, looking at it. Um, he is, he's very excited to say the least. I am too. <laughs> Man, these allergies have just tore me up this year. I don't know what is going on, but uh, I want to start the show. I want to get into the meat. I mean, because there is so much to talk about. And we, you know, we got Mike, Mike Patterson calling in tonight uh, from Bakersfield. He's our California, uh, California correspondent at Bakersfield Speedway on the mic down there. Um, Brett Endicott says, just going to throw this out there. We need to get Mike McCann to have a big street stock race at Southern Oregon. Brett, that we're working on that. We're working on that. There's some things to work out. Um, <clears throat> but we'll do our best to give that feedback. I mean, Mike McCann is old school. I'll tell you something about Mike McCann. And we're going to talk about this. It kind of ties in. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to talk about Mike McCann as, 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 a, as a man. When Mike McCann makes up his mind. Done deal. Yeah, there's no going back and changing. He I'm going to tell you that right now. And I've learned that in the short time that we have worked with him. Um, he, he does well listening as far as feedback. He's not one of those guys. Who, rah, 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 rah. But, you know, he'll, he'll listen to what you have to say. And if it's a good idea, he'll think about it. If it's not, he'll tell you right your face. Nope, not going to happen. I mean, there's no thinking about it. It's just that's what it is. And once he made up his mind, Mike is old school. Mike's a man of his word. When he says it, he means it, and that's it. We're going to talk about that later in the show. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, <coughs> I want to start. I want to start with the Cottonwood Classic with uh, results and highlights. Um, we do have some video coming of that deal. We were mounted up on a couple different cars. Gary was very busy in the pit area. Not as many cars as we expected. We were talking close to 40 cars. Okay? <clears throat> yeah. So this is where I – this is this is my deal. You guys know how I do it. When I say – when I get on something, like Mike McCann, there's a line. Once I've crossed that line, I've committed to myself. Okay? I've committed to – and we're going to talk about it. I believe you just committed yourself. I've committed right? myself, and, and that's okay. I, I, have, I have something to say, and I'm going to say it, and you guys know how this goes. When you run a certain division, whether it's, I don't care what division you run, and you complain, and you complain, and, and you, you talk about getting the car count up, you know, not enough people supporting this division, not enough people supporting this division, we need more, we need more, da 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 da, -da. okay? And that happens as, you know, while well, you, you wanted what you're getting, now you're getting more cars in that division at that track you're running. And the biggest race on the West Coast shows up with a huge amount of talent 
and you don't show up to support that show, you're the problem. I'll say it. You're the problem. There were several guys that did not show up to run that show because because they, quote, unquote, and this is what I was told, okay? I want you guys to pay You know, attention. hang on. And if, if that's not... If, if that's not correct, what would be really cool somebody. is if somebody would chime in. Correct me. Chime in. I'll There's, listen. You know, we have the chat line. Um, we have the message board that you can it's message It's right here. It's right live. We're getting we're now. getting information from people sending us and stuff Roy's right now. And Roy's quite funny. Ha, ha, oh, Roy's a comedian. Says, Roy Bain, he yeah. is. Yeah. But He's when you don't boy. support your own class after complaining about not having enough cars at the biggest race on the West Coast of 2019 – you're 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 the problem. You are part of the major problem of why that class isn't succeeding. There should have been forty cars. There should have been, and or th- more. there would have been. There would have been. Had a group of, now one guy, one guy, and I don't need to say any names. I, you know, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying if you're going to call people out and say you need to support the class, and then they show up at the biggest race and you don't, double standard right there. Yeah. You have no room. You have no room to talk or complain about anything from this point forward. Greg Arnold says, I showed up to run, and that's not even my class. And that's a fact. Yeah, he, he's absolutely. a guy that runs the late model lights, pulled out the four-cylinder, stuck in a V8. And you know what? Had a pretty good showing. But it makes me sick to my stomach. When you complain about something, and then it happens, and you don't support it. <coughs> Every single thing about that is wrong in every way. I'm serious. I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little hot headed about this right now, and, and and I think a lot of fans, from what we were, you know, the experience that we had at that race, the Cottonwood Classic at that race, a lot of fans were highly disappointed in the fact that they, some of their people didn't show up to support that deal. The local fans. Some of their people didn't show up to support it. And the local fans have a right to be upset. These are the guys they've supported over the last few years while trying to grow this class. You guys complain about how there's not enough cars and how when the the outer towners show up, they take the money. Then they all show up for the big money, and you don't show up. You've got no reason to complain about that money leaving the local area. None. None at all. You're the problem. You know, I had a couple of people – Loyal fans, they, uh, I was talking to them about it, and I said, why aren't some of the drivers here? And they actually told me, they'd been told by a few of them that they were basically outgunned, and they didn't want to tear their cars up. And I said, well, if that's the case, why didn't they at least come watch the show, support the track that way? If they, you know, if they didn't think they could keep up with them, it didn't turn out to be that way. And I understand what they're – I get that. But yeah, you know what? That's an too. excuse. Yeah. That is an excuse. But here's, I what thought, I'm, here's what I say to them. Here's what I say to them. Any given night, anybody can win. Anybody. Absolutely. Anybody. Now, here's the thing. Here, okay, let's talk about this, okay? Because all these out-of-towners showed up, and there was a lot, and there was heavy competition right here on the chat line. Checkered flag, asphalt, paving chat line. Joey Tanner says, everyone who is relevant showed up, plain and simple. The best of the best were there. I can't argue with that. No, they were. I going. cannot argue with that statement right there at all. None. There, there's no argument to that. He is absolutely 100 percent correct. There's some really good local drivers that just didn't there is show some up. good local talent down there, and there's a few guys I expected to be that didn't show up that I think would have been competitive had they done it. Absolutely. One guy that has it has a reason. His car was broke. He couldn't get right. it fixed in time. Nothing. You know. Not, not, this is not directed towards him. He knows who it is. I don't need to say anything. The rest of those guys that didn't show up. That is not how you grow your sport. That is not how you show the track owner that you want that division there. That's one way to show them you don't want the division there. Um, not a good statement to make. That's and like, these are, you know, here's the thing. These are all – they're good people. They're good people, but I don't think by simply looking at somebody and saying, well, they've got more money and they've got a better car. You're a local. You know that track better than anybody else. Got okay. the advantage right there. Any single night, anybody can win. And I'm going to make that point by this. Okay, we know Trent Elliott has been bad fast there this year. That is, We don't even have to talk about how fast he is. You look at the rules for this race, and you look what happened. Everybody. 